Hallo, konfirmanta. Så käckt att du ser på nå. Vi hade ju tänkt att docke skulle vara här i Sankt Johannes och att vi skulle kunna se docke och. Men nu må vi bara göra det bästa ut av situationen. Och idag ska docke få möta en gäst som docke skulle fått mött, visst docke hade vore här. Och det är er Ali Dorani. Ali Hjärtli välkommen. Mm. Så käckt att ha dig här. Yeah, thanks for having me here. Mm. Um, Sorry that I uh, speak English easier. That's yeah. okay. Mm. I think it's a good uh, lesson for the youngsters yeah, as well. They have English in school. <laughs> yeah. So I will try to translate mm-hmm. some pieces of what you are saying, man, but I think they catch most of it. Yeah. Um, so the first question I want to ask you who are you? Can Edu Ali? Mm. Okay, so I am uh, Ali Durrani. Uh, I am 29 years old and I'm a cartoonist, uh, political cartoonist, known as a political cartoonist. My artistic name is Mr. Eaton Fish. Och vi ser på plakaten här så har man Ali Durrani där och så har man där och. Yeah. Och um, han är en politisk satiretegner. Um, hvor länge har du bott i Norge? Uh, I lived in Norway for three years. Next month is going to be three, mo- three years. Okay. And uh, so I arrived in Norway in 17th of December 2017. Yeah. And I came here straight from jail. Yeah. Uh, right, uh, like uh, a day before I came here, I was in jail. Yeah. Um, Du sa du kom fra fängsel. Är mm. er du en kriminell? No, I am not a criminal. I uh, I was a refugee. I was an asylum seeker in uh, Australia. Så du är er en flykting men havna i fängsel. Mm. How come? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in uh, 2013, yeah. I there were some things going on in my home country, around me and my family. And uh, I don't usually talk about the reasons I left my home country uh, because of my family's safety, they're very important for me. So Ali, he doesn't talk about the reason why he left Iran, because of the family's security. But it was troubling and difficult for family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, in Norway, if you do political activities, the government, if the government doesn't like it, they just come to you and uh, 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 annoy you, yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, if you're a political activist in Iran or whatever, uh, the government uh, annoys you and uses your family to uh, uh, yeah. to reach you. Så det är er väldigt forskjellig i Iran fra i Norge. Her i Norge så blir vi personlig ansvarlige når vi har gjort noe så vår, våre styresmakter ikke lika. Men i Iran så blir hele familien involvert mm. og kan bli tatt og straffet. Mm. Not in all uh, the, the situations, but that happens. Yeah. So, and also the reason I left my home country was my family's safety. Mm-hmm. It was better that I stay away from them. Mm-hmm. So then I chose uh, leaving uh, my home country. Yeah. Jag har bara lust här och så spör jag dock konfirmanta om dock själv känner någon som har flyktat. Känner du någon flyktning som bor i Norge? Eller är er det någon i dockas familj som är er gamla nog till att ha upplevt andra världskrig? och som känner någon som har flyktat. I höst så mötte jag faktiskt en dama som bor på sjukhem nu som var flykting under andra världskrig. Hur flyktat till Sverige för att inte bli tatt av tysk politi. Jag tänker att det är er en väldigt viktig del av vår historia och genom det kan vi lära möja av och hur det er i idag. Så vi ska känna någon så prova att finna ut hur de hade det och vad som skedde och var nyfikna på historien deras. 
Um, jeg vet at mange av de som opplevde andre verdenskrig ikke ville snakke om krigen, for det var alt for tøft for dig. Derfor så kjenner jeg litt sånn uro over å snakke med Ali og, for jeg vet at hans historie er veldig tøffe. Men nå spør jeg Ali. Um, hvordan er det for deg å snakke om det du har opplevd? Um. It's a little bit tough. A lot of things have been happening to me. Mm. Uh, most of them were horrible. But uh, for me, telling stories to uh, people is something that makes me feel that if I can help some one person uh, emotionally or uh, uh, mostly emotionally with my story, uh, that's uh, like a world to me, if I can help just one person by sharing my story. Du har fortalt historien din gjennom bilder. Mm. Og nå tror jeg vi tegger en vandring gjennom bildene dine. Let's start walking. Mm -hmm. What do you sure. want to show us? Uh, we show these two first. Because uh, these are, in this exhibition, uh, these are the oldest pictures uh, I drew. Well, I, I, well, when I said I left my country, I uh, had no choice but going to Australia. Because Australia was the easiest country that I could, easiest Western country that I could get to. And uh, with the thinking of Australia is open for immigrants and I will be safe there. So when I went to Australia, they, instead of uh, giving me a refugee status or uh, putting me into immigration process. They uh, imprisoned me and uh, took my rights away from me. Uh, like the basic human rights, like uh, access to telephone, internet, uh, even drawing materials, all of these. I was, uh, I didn't have any access to these things. How did you do that? I started, uh, it's a funny story because, uh, because I asked the government to give me papers. I just wanted to make my, um, have my diary for myself. Not pro uh, protesting, nothing. It was just that I'm not a good writer, I'm a good drawer. So I just wanted to uh, uh, keep my diary safe for myself. I asked the government, they didn't give me papers. So then I had to steal papers from the authorities. And uh, these uh, the papers that I stole, they were not blank papers, they were like documents, but I could find like a blank uh, the area in the documents and I drew cartoons. I did that for a long time because uh, not having the lack of equipment and uh, uh, internet and drawing materials. And if you look at uh, my drawing, this was one of the first drawing that was published in the newspapers. I have so much information in one uh, frame and uh, it, absolu it absolutely shows the, the lack of materials because I didn't have enough papers and I couldn't make mistakes to lose the paper. I didn't have eraser, so I had to put as much as information as possible in one, one paper or one blank area of the paper. So you see, most of my drawings are so confusing because there is so much information in it. So you have tried to write a whole book on a little four-kant. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, uh, the government uh, really, really was restricted. Yeah. In, uh, after putting uh, me and many others in prison, they really, really restricted us. Uh, also in this second drawing, uh, when the uh, Australian government imprisoned me, they uh, gave me an ID card, which looked like this. It was saying uh, the uh, Immigration Processing Centre, and I had a name. Uh, I had a number as my name, which was called RUF115, and that's a, like a military code. It's like Romo Uniform Foxtrot 115. It's not even a human humanish number. Huh. So I was called by that number for over five years. And the Australian government was not only calling me like a number, but also hundreds of other children and families. 
And this is like one of the most horrible thing can happen to a human is that being like an object, being called like an object. The last time such a thing happened in history was during World War II and calling Jewish people nothing but Jewish or nothing, they didn't have any value, but they were just Jewish. Yeah. So the, go the government those days used to do whatever they wanted to these people because they didn't have a human value. And the government of Australia, Australia was doing this to children as well. So some of these children, they were born in these places, they were being called number, and now they are eight, nine years old and they are still there. Yeah. So this uh, picture is... Frendeles uh, hadi, ich hätte nauen die Haber et Nummer. Yeah, only number, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, this uh, picture is showing uh, it's showing that when I was sick there, uh, I wasn't called by number, by my name, um, it was just a number. And yeah, even today, if somebody calls me with that number, just try to joke with me. Yeah. I automatically jump and say it's me. Yeah. And imagine what happens to those children. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you are there beside an open grave. Mm. Uh, that was what you felt. I'm going to die. I was really sick. Yeah. Uh, I had many hunger strikes in the detention centers. Yeah. And uh, it was like I didn't have, they wouldn't take care of us properly. No. Or we didn't have access to proper medical uh, center. So if you get, we, if I got sick there, that means I was close to death. Yeah. So if we go to the next drawings here. Yeah. Uh, I lived in the prison for five years under Australia's uh, government's attention. Um, a lot of bad things were happening, not only to me, to many others, young people like you. Uh, one of the problems I had there was sexual harassment uh, from uh, other uh, fellow mates or uh, authorities. And uh, being there in that situation, not having given a name, not having any rights, was so difficult for me to complain about my situation because I didn't have any value. So even if that was happening to me, I did not have any option to leave that place or complain or uh, resisting was so difficult. So I decided to draw uh, this cartoon and uh, uh, just to express my feelings. Yeah. That no is a very, very simple word. Yeah. If you're not interested in any sexual activity, it's just no, that's it. Yeah. And uh, so I did that drawing uh, to show this protest, yeah. Did you, did you, sh you didn't show it, it to anyone at the, uh, it, 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 it's just in your book? Uh, it has been published. Yeah, afterwards. Afterwards, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> but for a long time they were just in my books. Yeah. 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 Så ikke en gang det, det var trygt, altså det med seksuell trakassering. Eh, det var ikke mulig å slippe unna, og det var ikke mulig å si nei, for at han var underlagt et system der det ikke var en frihet. Ja, yeah, when you're locked in a place like that, yeah. it's a prison. Yeah. So a lot of things can happen, yeah. if also the government is not protecting you. Yeah. Yeah. And in this uh, next drawing, I remember I just looked at the Australian land, the Australia's land, and thinking that it's so separated and far from everything. And I decided to make this to even show that Australia's map is also very liking to be joined to uh, other, other places. So I decided to call even Australia's map as a refugee. Yeah. yeah. So Australia is a refugee. Yeah, because Australia is one of the new countries. Yeah. And uh, trying to join the world and uh, show that we are there, this is Australia, is all, uh, exactly the same as being a refugee and trying to go to other join countries and join the, the rest of the world. Yeah. yeah. Which picture do you want to take us to now? Uh, we can go to the last two yeah. over there. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. and. Uh, I, while we were living in detention center, me and hundreds of others, yeah. we did not have access to internet or telephone. No. So we almost lived like cave people, yeah. like uh, uh, in the middle of Pacific Ocean. 
So and you got food? We had food, horrible food. Uh, yeah. It was so much food, but horrible. And you had a place where you could do sports? Not really. Not really? No, no, the places we used to do a sport was tent. Okay. And just go there and just... Uh, do what you could. Yeah, do what you could, yeah. And... What else did you do? I myself, I was suffering from OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Okay. So I hate germs. Okay. And I like to be clean all the time. So living in that place was like, I had to restrict myself because of my illness. Yeah. So I did not do much there. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, imagine like five years doing Nothing. that much. Yeah, it's like you're stuck in time and yeah. every day is the same. Yeah. yeah. Fem år utan någon möjlighet till studier, mm. utan fritidsaktiviteter, ingen förbindelse med familjen, mm. bara i en cella. Ja. Och eh och överlåta sig själv, ingen internet, ingen bok, mm. ingenting. No. Det är er en hård mental träning. In this uh, new world we have, the, the the modern world, living without internet or telephone is like yeah. is horrible. Like, yeah. Uh, ja, vi kan ju spöja konformanta, en dock konformanta, hur stock hade klart dock i i coronatiden, vi stock inte hade haft uh, internet eller uh, Snapchat if you didn't yeah, have Snapchat, or, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So in this drawing uh, I decided to show uh, the difference between an Iranian refugee and a Norwegian uh, citizen. So it's like if uh, a Norwegian wants to travel anywhere in the world, uh, it's f he's free or she's free to do whatever they want yeah, without, being, without being asked. So no, no, um, no, before there Corona, mm. so could we make our trips to all these lands here, who now have got an in-trip. Eller forbudt, mm. And I have so many friends, uh, Norwegians, that they either have been into, in Kenya or they would love to travel to Kenya. And I always ask them, have you ever thought that a Kenyan can travel to Norway that easy? And that's not, that's no quiz, no answer. Yeah. Because Kenyan, if I, they want to travel to Norway, they have to go through a very, very long immigration process. But the Norwegians, when they want to go to their countries, yeah. uh, there is not a, a long process. And it's the same with the Iranians, like because of the America's international sanctions, we cannot travel. If we want to be a backpacker in Europe, it's impossible for us to do that. So everywhere we want to go in the, wo to the, in the world is like blocked. And I just wanted to show uh, this is story in my drawing, yeah. yeah. And after five years living in detention center, uh, um, and all these stories that happened, after two years I got access to internet, the government allowed, allowed us to have 45 minutes internet. And I used that 45 minutes for social media. Yeah, so after five years, so I can love to use in internet mm. 45 minutes i vega. Mm -hmm. Och det de 45 minuter brukte Ali till att posta ting på internet. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I used the 45 minutes to log in my Facebook and send thousands of messages to random people without getting any reply. I did that for over a year and nobody replied to me. And I had to like 45 minutes come back to my room go back to, after one week, go back to the internet. If anybody replied, if nobody replied, then I had to send the messages more and more until I got a reply from someone and uh, I was able to send my drawings to her. So it took a whole year before the first contact was established. Mm. It took a year until one person replied. Yeah. And that person was like someone I didn't know and she didn't know me. And she didn't know what I was talking about. The process for me getting to know her and she getting to know me and trust me took months because it was like 45 minutes. I had yeah. to come to my room, wait for one week. And she had so many questions. So I had to go back and reply to question and come back and wait for the next week to go. If she had questions, I had to answer. So this process took months until she trusted me. And then she asked me to smuggle my drawings to Australia.
to smuggle your... My drawings yeah. to Australia. So I had to smuggle my drawings to Australia. Yeah. So I became a robber stealing papers and then I had to smuggle art to one of the most free countries in the world. Um, so you had to smuggle uh, kunsten din til Australia. Uh, so på en måte så er du kriminell. Yeah. Because of art. Yeah. Yeah. Men du, uh, how did you manage to smuggle it? Um, I found someone, one of the authorities, yeah. that he was interested in helping me. Yeah. And he took my drawings to Australia. Yeah. Trusting him for me was so difficult yeah. because he was one of the authorities. <gasps> but he took my drawings to this woman on Facebook. Yeah. And she published my drawings in Australia. And suddenly my drawings were published all around Australia after that. Yeah. And people were talking about it. And uh, news organizations, there was a huge hashtag campaign on Twitter, one of the largest cartooning campaigns in history under Eating Fish name. And uh, suddenly after all these publications and speaks and talks, someone from Stavanger yeah. emailed me. And I had no idea what Stavanger was. And she told me that they are working on my case to get me out of there. And I remember I was on a hunger strike, very, very sick. Uh, I was like, somebody just wants to make me feel good. And it's interesting because that person works at the library. Okay. So someone sent this email from a library in Stavanger to middle of Pacific Ocean. And uh, they told me that, and then I got an email from UDI invitation to come to Norway and then I came to Norway. When I came to Norway I drew this drawing mm. and it, uh, t it's a short story about how I came to Norway and uh, I drew this uh, Viking ship uh, coming to uh, Pacific Ocean and helping me and getting me out of there mm. and uh, when I came to Norway, uh, before I came to Norway Friends from library, they sent me photos of Stavanger, all taken in summer. Mm. And Stavanger was so beautiful, green and beautiful. When I came here, it was dark, middle of uh, December, dark and no green leaves on trees. And I was thinking, I was so afraid because I thought the government betrayed me oh. and they are exiling me to another cold country. But then after a couple of days, I felt better, and now I feel so safe here. Yeah. But uh, really, uh, what kind of... Uh, how did you get away from the island? Uh, it was a long process because uh, when I was under Australia's uh, attention, yeah. I did not have any document. So I wasn't actually a person, no one in the world. And uh, no, the Norwegian government had to find out to get me out of there. So what they did was they actually made me a Norwegian residence. Okay. So they gave me Norwegian documents. Okay. So the Australian government could not keep me in prison anymore because I was a Norwegian. That's really fantastic. And that's how I walked to the airport. Nobody stopped me. And I got to the airplane, nobody stopped me. And I came to Norway. With a Norwegian passport? With a Norwegian document, travel document, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how I got out of there. Like, the Norwegian government made it as, as smooth as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, it took a long time, but it happened. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think we have to close it mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we, I will make an, a, a mail and some questions mm -hmm. and ask them to, to answer. Mm -hmm. And if I get answers, I'll let you know. Thank you, yeah. Så da skal dere få en mail og noen spørsmål også, og så håper jeg at dere vil sende en hilsen til Ali. Men jeg har et spørsmål til slutt, og jeg har lyst til å spørre Ali hva han tenker at vi som bor i Norge, og spesielt dere som er ungdommer, kan gjøre for at flyktninger i Norge skal føle seg trygge. Mm. Do not uh, make a difference between you and them. Okay. So don't call. If someone looks different, don't think that, that she or he might be a refugee. Just a person. We all live in Norway and we are all Norwegian and we have to respect the Norwegian law. So there is no difference between 
a refugee and a Norwegian. We all live in one country. Det synes jeg var et veldig enkelt og tydelig råd. Vi er alle like. Vi er alle forpliktet til å holde de samme reglene. Og vi skal oppføre oss likt mot hverandre. Så vis vanlig interesse, vær hyggelig. Ja. Jeg har lyst til å avslutte med å tenne et lys. Og jeg lurer på, kan du hjelpe meg å tenne lyset? Kan du lytte kandelen for meg? Because I have only one hand. Ok, hvilke kandelen? Det er veldig lett. Ja. Jeg må være kjærlig for å ikke bære meg her. Ja, ikke bære deg her. Det er rett. Det er alt jeg trenger. Det er alt jeg trenger. Konfirmanter, når vi har tent lys, så har jeg tidligere lest det som Jesus sier. Jesus sier, jeg er verdens lys. Den som følger meg skal ikke vandre i mørket, men ha livets lys. Og når vi tenner dette lyset nå, så er det for jeg tenker at Ali er et lys for de som er i mørket. Og vi kan være med, vi også, og være lys for de som trenger å kjenne at det er mørkt rundt deg. Vi kan være lys for hverandre, og være venner det går an å stole på, og vi kan vise at vi er trufaste, og vi er greie med hverandre. Jesus vil være i sammen med oss og gi oss råd. Så ha en fortsatt god dag, og takk til deg, Ali, som har delt av din historie. Ja, takk for å ha meg, og takk for å lytte til meg. Ha det bra! Ha det!